what's up my friends it's Aki here thank God it's Friday we're here at our studio uh, today I want to show you the Aeroflow desktop wind tunnel that I designed and 3d printed uh, what it is it's a mini version of a wind tunnel where it allows you to test your uh, cars or airplane model that's up to 1 over 32 scale put in the chamber and then we can do the aerodynamic simulation so let me show you how this works um, I'm not trying to sell you or anything although you can find it on my website but I want this video to be more just like a walkthrough of how it works and what are some of the design consideration while I was designing it and what are some of the challenges that I ran into and how it took us to what we have here today so I'm just closing the lid right now Let's start off by the physical feature of this wind tunnel. Um, I think this thing looks pretty sleek uh, with the blacked out chamber. We do have the red uh, rear grill here in the back where the air is being uh, exhausted outward. And on the left side here, this is our uh, mist maker. As you can see, it's already making some really nice thick laminar flow water mist which later is going to travel across the chamber and that's going to interact with the car model so to turn it on turn this knob and right away you can see the air is interacting with the car we can also crank up the speed um, that's going to make the air more straight uh, it's a little bit too tall, so I'm going to move the nozzle around right here. It's flexible. So we're hitting different areas of the car. Let's talk about why I made this thing first. So I grew up in a family um, that's heavily under the influence of like car culture. <clears throat> Excuse me. I remember in my family, like we would have like eight cars parking in the driveway for absolutely no reason, but that's how much we love cars. Mostly are like Subaru or, you know, Japanese car, like the WRX STI. So I grew up to, you know, really like the cars as well, but let's be real. I don't think I can ever afford any of these right here. Then I started collecting these uh, diecast car models because that's also one way to show my uh, passion or my love for these car as well. But let's be real, right? These cars can be a little boring just sitting on the shelf for display. To make it more interesting, to really put it in motion and bring it back to life, is to um, put it in a um, wind tunnel like this, where you can really see how the air interacts with the car. And also, it just looks cool. You can make a lot of cool videos on it. And on a side note, I think the um, overall design also looks pretty cool, like of the wind tunnel. And this itself can be a display piece on, on a shelf. Uh, one of the challenges I ran into is trying to find the right balance for the size of the tunnel because um, I didn't want it to be too small, right? If it's too small that you can only put like a Hot Wheel ca uh, cars in it, then it would just not be that universal. So I want it to be a little bigger. So I decided to make it eight and a half inch wide and then four or four and a half um, for the width as well as the height. So I found that to be a good, good balance between the cost of making it as well as the, uh, the result. Let's put this uh, truck in there. Look at that. Truck is fascinating when it comes to the um, aerodynamic profile because we have a huge uh, trunk in the back and the aerodynamic could be different, depends. If you have a um, open truck bed, you can also put a cover on it or you can actually let the tailgate down and that's going to change its aero profile. Now, another challenge that I ran into is the um, Trying to figure out what what is a good way to make that smoke. 
I think usually people use heating oil, like they produce smoke by heating oil, like a vape. But I found that just, you know, a little bit too too dangerous. I, I don't want to be under the impression that I'm, I'm vaping, you know, in front of my family. So, so I decided to go with, uh, with the water. Now, the problem with using water is that um, the mist that it produces are usually very thin and they're very hard to work with. If you blow the air too fast, it, it just kind of disappears. We have to find a way to make the flow, like make it naturally exit out the, uh, the uh, outlet. So the way I did it was to have a deep container and then have a air intake in the back and a air outlet on, at a lower elevation. That way the mist will just naturally float downward as you can see right here, it's nice and thick. Now with the help from the exhaust fan, you can really move the air a lot without you know, thinning it. That's all I want to show you today and you can definitely check it out on, um, on my website if you're interested. And thank you for all the support, uh, all the likes and subscribe. And this journey has really been fun for me. Never knew how far I could push myself. Um, you know, I learned to design and optimize the products and then make my own website, you know, set up payments, set up, set up company, things like that. So it's uh, been really cool learning experience. And I, ho I hope you enjoy it as well. So until then, see you in the next video. Peace.